American history and American food. Two unique worlds that when brought together create a culinary experience like no other. This is Histories. Welcome to History, the show in search of historical eateries, those special and awesome places that combine historical atmosphere with great food. And what better place to begin our journey than right here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. At the height of the American Civil War, the Army of Northern Virginia, commanded by General Robert E. Lee, and the Army of the Potomac, commanded by General George Meade, clashed in a small rural town in South Central Pennsylvania that would forever change the course of our nation. The Battle of Gettysburg raged from July 1st to July 3rd, 1863, and immortalized such places as Devil's Den, the Wheat Field, the Peach Orchard, and Little Round Top. In just three days of battle, casualties exceeded 50,000 men, becoming the largest military engagement in the history of the Western Hemisphere. The Battle of Gettysburg was epic and awful. The battle was fought not only in the hills and fields around Gettysburg, but actually in the town itself. And our first stop was a building that was caught in the crossfire. Welcome to the historic Farnsworth House Inn. Built in 1810 and named in honor of Brigadier General Elon John Farnsworth, this building sheltered Confederate sharpshooters during the three-day battle, and it's believed by some that one of those sharpshooters fired the bullet that accidentally took the life of the only civilian casualty of the fight, Jenny Wade. In November of 1863, at the dedication of the National Cemetery at Gettysburg, President Abraham Lincoln himself passed by this spot on his way to deliver his immortal Gettysburg Address, an event commemorated every year on Remembrance Day. I spoke to Loring Schultz, owner of the Farnsworth House Inn, about this historic place. So, let me ask, the Farnsworth House Inn, I mean, historic as it is, uh, the unique features of it, the one that stands out, of course, to a lot of people, is all those bullet holes on the side. What's the story behind that? Well, we had uh, Union Army was driven out through the town on the first day of the battle, driven up on top of East Cemetery Hill. And the Confederates were in the town, and uh, they advanced to our house and a little bit beyond, and they started sharpshooting back and forth. And that's why we see, every, every time you see a puff of smoke out that window, of course, the Union soldier, he'd fire on that. And that's why we have so many bullet holes in the house. The whole side of the house right. was pelted by Union soldiers uh, returning right. fire. Right. Like plus, sharp plus we have the door with uh, three bullet, one bullet hole ripped right through it. Sure. Another bullet hit the panel and split it. And then we have another bullet didn't strike it quite so hard. But uh, heavy fire being put against the house. Well, you bought the place in 1972. What's some of the unique, uh, you know, programs, features, things that that the Farnsworth House Inn is known for, and what what can people expect if they want to visit? Uh, what do you offer? The first thing we did was we, we put the bed and breakfast rooms in, and the tavern. Then the next thing we did, we added a uh, uh, beer garden out front. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that nice garden, and yeah. outside dining, we added the outside dining. And then we uh, came over and did a Civil War camp, which is located in the back of the Farnsworth House. So we give tours of the camp. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what you call in your shoes. We give the school groups a wooden gun, a hat, and a haversack. And we bring them over to the camp. A, a Civil War soldier uh, drills them. And uh, we do a little reenactment. And uh, we have a water wheel, a blacksmith shop. Uh, we're working on a smokehouse now. and. Uh, and we have a uh, root cellar, and so just like a farmstead would have been if the, as the Confederates marched into town. Right. They, they saw all of right. these things, so that's the newest thing that we have. Well, you also, uh, it's known uh, during the, the filming of the movie Gettysburg, uh, many of the stars hung out the Farnsworth house in, didn't they? Hang out in the Sweeney Tavern there? Yeah, just about all, all of them were in here. Uh, Tom Berger and all of them hung out here. So uh, Tom Berger said this is the official headquarters of the Army in Northern Virginia. <laughs> okay, he yeah. made it that. Stephen Lang is a great guy too. Yeah, he sure. played picket. And, sure. And we see Steve from time to time. Uh, Do you still? Him. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And tell me about the uh, the ghost tours uh, and you, the connection of the Farnsworth House in with the, with they're popular now in Gettysburg. But what's the connection you guys have with that? 
Uh, our daughter Patty uh, told the first ghost story in 1986 in the basement of the Farnsworth house. And from there, I think we have like 16 or 20 different uh, companies doing ghost walks now. And yours was and the first. first. Yeah, we, we were the first to tell a ghost story. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Oh, I appreciate pleasure. everything you're sharing, and thank you for letting us visit your fine establishment. Great food, great people. We Good. love it. We love it. Good, thank you. Bullet holes from the battlefield, historical bed and breakfast, movie star hangout, ghost rooms and haunted tours. Yeah, this place has got the history. And when we return, we're going to check out their eats. History made possible by. Welcome back. I'm here in the Sweeney Tavern at the historic Farnsworth House Inn. Looking over their menu, there's some really cool dishes here that honor the legacy of Gettysburg. Dishes like the Mr. Lincoln salad, the Union Burger, and the 26 North Carolina short rib sandwich. All of it sounds delicious, but it's time for me to head back in the kitchen and meet the chef behind these awesome eats. I spent time with Chef Wayne Schmidt in the kitchen, and he showed me how they lay down the eats at the Farnsworth house. All right, Chef, what are you cooking for us today? Well, um, I got the Grant's Apple Bacon Bourbon Pork Chop that we have on the menu. Um, it's a dish that General Grant liked uh, with the apples and the bacon. General Grant likes it, I like it. Let's do it. I got the pork chop, gonna go in the grill. Got my roasted red potatoes that I'm getting in the pan started. Mm. And I'm gonna make my sauce, which is the apple bacon bourbon. Get my pan hot, I wanna get my oil hot first. Now, did you say apple bourbon? Apple bourbon. How much bourbon? Uh, around the pan. Well then I'm in. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna throw my apples in there. Nice. Whoa! Eyebrow check, eyebrow check. I'm gonna go with some garlic, some salt and pepper. And let the co oil cook out of that a little yep. bit, and then I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients. The vegetables. Ooh, smells awesome. So General Grant actually liked, this was actually General Grant's? Yes. We did some research and looked into it. We were trying to think of some more things like Civil War yeah, to put yeah, on a menu. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes, that's what we're looking for in history. Places like this that do unique things with food that just don't, you're not getting that at a burger joint. Yes. Am I right? Yes. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white wine. Now I'm gonna start building my sauce. All right. Let's put the bacon in. Bacon. Got some apple juice. Oh man, I'm liking where this is going. Add my brown sugar. Bourbon. Oh yeah. Whew. Add cold butter to thicken it. Yeah. So now we're gonna plate the pork chop. Go grab it. Stick it for a second. Look at that. Potatoes. <laughs> Start with the rice and red potatoes. And that's it. Oh man. Look at that. This looks fabulous. Something tells me it's gonna taste fabulous too. Wow. Isn't that applesauce awesome? Thank you. That is banging, oh my gosh. No wonder Grant liked this. That's sweet, and that bourbon, I can taste that bourbon. Yes. Boy, does it set it off. Does it really set that off? Chef, I don't, I don't even know what to say. This is one of the best pork chops I've ever had, truly. I mean, it's fantastic. I Thank you. Wow. It's one of our biggest sellers on the menu. That's why I wanted to show you this dish. We sell a lot of these on, on the dinner. Well, I menu. can see why. I mean, <laughs> that's like, 
If I could get a steady supply of these, you would to be rolling me out of every place I get to. That's just absolutely fantastic. Oh my gosh, is there anything else that you'd like to showcase? After eating that, I'd like to know, is there anything else you'd like me to try and like to show everybody about uh, the Farnsworth House menu here? I would. Um, I would like to show you the Game Pine and Pumpkin Fritters. Game Pine prump Pumpkin Fritters? Yes. I'm in. Let's see it. Yes. Ooh, pumpkin Fritters. Look at that thing. Look at that. Mmm. You're right. That's like a pumpkin pie. That's awesome. That texture is wonderful. This is like bonus eats here at the Farnsworth house. That to me is better than pumpkin pie because of the outside, the crust, you know, because the, yeah, yes. the crusty, crispy with the creamy in the middle. That's way better than a pumpkin pie. Way better. Way better. I love Thank it. You. Love it. So now I'm about to pull the game pie out of the oven. All right, let's see this. Oh, look, at, look at that. It's ready to go. Let's dive into this. That's like a pot pie on steroids. Okay. That broth is so rich. What's all in there? What, what all is it? Well, turkey, duck, and pheasant, uh, mushrooms, bacon lardoons, and then they get the puff pastry crust on top, a little bit of gravy mixture. The signature dish at the Farnsworth house. Uh, we sell more of them than we sell anything on the menu. The crust is so good. The mix of meats. How savory that, that broth is so savory. Is it because of all the different meats yes. blended together? Blended together with everything that, that's made to make the uh, flavors, yes. I mean, you could put that on dirt and I would eat it. It's just, just, just fantastic. Absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Chef Schmidt, thank you so much. It's thank been you. great, I'm telling you. This guy, he's the man. You gotta get to the Farnsworth House Inn, Sweeney Tavern. This guy's cooking up some great grub, great grub. Thank you, Chef, great thank job, you. great job. Great historic atmosphere, great food, and a great staff. On your next trip to Gettysburg, you gotta hit up the historic Farnsworth House Inn. It's awesome. Up next, we visit a tavern in the oldest standing building in Gettysburg when History returns. History brought to you by... To call our next stop in Gettysburg historic is a bit of an understatement. In fact, it's the oldest standing structure in the entire town, and it just so happens to be an awesome place to eat. Welcome to the historic Dobbin House Tavern. Built in 1776, the same year as our nation's birth, the original building was the home of the Reverend Alexander Dobbin, an Irish immigrant and highly respected community leader, minister, and educator. In fact, this building housed the first classical school in America west of the Susquehanna River. In the mid-1800s, the building served as a station for hiding runaway slaves on their journey to freedom on the Underground Railroad. In the aftermath of the Battle of Gettysburg, the Dobbin House served as a hospital for wounded soldiers of both North and South. I spoke to owner Jackie White about the history of the tavern. Jackie, so tell me about some of the interesting historical aspects of dining at the Dobbin House Tavern. Well, at the Dobbin House, we have many different rooms throughout the house where you can dine. And here we're in the parlor and we've got these nice high backs in front of the historic fireplace. And when we were doing the restoration of the house, we discovered that there were uh, initials carved into this mantle and they are in definite 18th century fancy script. Mm -hmm. The initials are S.A. Well, we discovered that Reverend Dobbin had a uh, stepson whose name was Smith Agnew. So we think Smith snuck into the kitchen and stole a carving knife. And then of all rooms in the house, he came into the good living room and carved his initials. Wow. We can only imagine what trouble that kid <laughs> got into. Yeah. But uh, here it is over 200 years later, and he has le definitely left his mark. And you can dine Dominance. right in front of it. Right you here. You can dine right here. And, and so, oh, yeah. Is there any other things that you want to show us that oh, have to do with historical? Lots of different things. Awesome. Let's, let's, let's see them. Let's see them. And here we are in the library. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. And these are some of um, replicating Reverend Dobbin's books. Now there was an inventory taken after Reverend Dobbin's death 
and it said that he had over 300 books. This was really unusual because there was no school back then. So most people couldn't read or write. Most people couldn't even write their own sure. name. And Reverend Dobbin had all these books. People would come in and they would say, gee, I can read. Could I borrow one of your books? So we say that it was the first library of the area since he loaned out books. So here, of course, you can eat right next to Reverend Dobbin's library. And on that inventory, it actually listed the names of a few people who had not yet brought back their books. They didn't ring their books. Yeah. So Delinquents. Like, yeah. If they had to pay that fine after all these years, they'd be in big <laughs> yeah. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and you can eat right in the presence of Reverend right. Dobbin's library. Want to see some more things? I do want to see some more things. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Let's, Let's go. Let's <laughs> Okay, here we are in the bedrooms of the Dobbin House. Wow. Have a seat in one of our beds where you can actually eat in bed. This is unique. Yes. This is really something. People love these. They call us up and make reservations so they can have dinner in bed. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I've never seen one in my life. So literally, this is my first time in a, what do you call these? Bed tables, table beds? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, well, there you that's go. a really, really an interesting concept. And right next to this bed is a door that is one of the original doors to wow. the Dobbins uh, 1776 house. And in that door is a hole. Oh, it's yeah. purported to be a bullet hole from the Battle of Gettysburg. It shows that bullets were flying through windows and through doors, and that's why the people of Gettysburg, a lot of them hid in their basements for the three days of the battle. Because a lot of folks, if you were up standing upstairs, you could have gotten sure. hit. And in fact, there was one woman who was hit and killed during the battle, one civilian. Yeah. Well, this, uh, again, you can eat here. You can actually come and eat in this bed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. right with that, uh, with a bullet hole right there. History and food together. There you go. I love Can't it. beat that combination. That's awesome. So now we're in the museum room. And um, here we uh, have a display case where we put some of the things that we unearthed when we were digging out the tavern. Oh. See, the tavern, when we bought the Dobbin house, was just a crawl space. The dirt came to about my chin and they built the Dobbin House over top of a really good spring and the water was actually rotting the timbers. And we thought, well, you have to take care of the water while we're doing that. We'll just dig down and we'll make another room. So that's how we made the tavern. And, and this... while we were digging out the dirt, we went through it and we found all these artifacts. Wow. You see, back that. in the colonial days, they didn't have such a thing as garbage pickup. So when something broke, you didn't want it anymore, you just threw it down in the basement. Wow. So we found things from the 18th century and into the 19th century and even into the 20th century. Oh, Showed dear. us all the kinds of things that they had back in the old days. That's great. Yeah. So much here. There, there so really much you could is. probably show me, huh? So much more. There is a lot more. We could go on and on. Just the fact that the Dobbin House Tavern is the oldest building in Gettysburg makes it historic. But there's so much more to it. Classical school, field hospital, underground railroad. Yeah, this place has got the history. And now we're ready to check out the eats. Like this dish, Seafood Isabella. This favorite, the King's French Onion Soup. Fantastic. And this, the Drunken Scallops. Look at that. Let me show you a couple of cool historical features about the Dobbin House, like this, the original spring, and it's still flowing. Check out this hidden crawl space where runaway slaves were hidden on their way to freedom in the north. Let freedom ring. The 
the historic Dobbin House Tavern, another place you should hit up when you visit Gettysburg. Well, that's it for this episode of History Eat. But no worries, we'll be on the lookout for even more unique and historic eateries for you to enjoy. We'll see you next time on History Eat. Mm-hmm.